No one in this world can you trust. Not men, not women, not beasts. This you can trust. Hello and welcome to another episode of Glory of Golden State Gaming. I'm your host, Swamp Swimmer, and with me as always, the Duncan to my Starbucks, Vespasian. Hey everybody. I've got my uh I'm repping my my proxy table gaming Team England shirt today. Tom nice. Parker. Love you, buddy. Lucky sixes. I got a chance to meet him over there, which is really cool. So yeah. Yeah, I'm slightly jealous. You have to meet a bunch of cool YouTubers and people in the ninth age sphere uh that I did not get to partake in. I'm very jealous. Yeah. Future. In the future. You'll be there. <laughs> So, a uh, quick question, just a, a little random note. I started a new job. I'm currently working for Starbucks Corporation, you know, the big company that makes coffee. And I have a little bit of a dilemma. I work for Starbucks and I don't drink coffee. I feel very weird about that. So I wanted not only the community's advice, but Vespasian's advice. A, what is your coffee choice mix blend uh, of preference and what do you think I should start my coffee adventure with? Whoa, um, that's a um, that's a big question. Um, I am a big coffee fan. I, I like making it at home though, personally. Um, I feel like I can get get a better better result on average. Um, so I don't know. Um, why don't you drink coffee? I just never have. I just, it, it wasn't like any sort of um, like moral choice. It was just like, I just didn't like the taste. That was purely it. I got my caffeine yeah, through enough. soda. <laughs> they have, they have plenty of non coffee drinks there. They're mm -hmm. like their iced teas and stuff like that are, are nice. Um, so that's, that's definitely an option. Yeah. Okay. So you just go for straight coffee. Yeah. There's no, you don't go for an espresso. You don't go for a latte. You don't go for. I I like I like those, but you know I think that when I go when I go to Starbucks, I tend to get like stuff that I can't do at home, right? So I so I would you know more typically get like a cappuccino or something like that at a Starbucks um, because I make like a French press you know at home basically. So um, that's kind of your more standard coffee, I guess. Um, you know, or like that, that's, that's sort of my, that, that's kind of, when I go out, I, t I tend to do those espresso machine, you know, uh, kind of drinks because I don't have one of those at home. Yeah. makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, fair enough. Um, if you're watching this video and you have a recommendation for me of what kind of coffee drink to try first, let me know. But anyway. Let's get on to the battle report. We are here talking about round five of ETC 2023 Team USA versus Team Denmark. Uh, overall, you day one was fantastic for you guys. Day two, not as fantastic. You're kind of middle of the road right now after round four. Um, yeah, you get paired into Denmark and you get paired into Rasmus, who's playing King of Equitaine. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so finally, not another uh, Vampire Covenant army, which is very exciting. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but you guys are playing uh, Encircle and Spoils of War. Let's see here. I think the next yeah. pick. Uh, if you are interested in Vespasian's list, please click the link right above my head. It'll take you to the round uh, scrimmage one video where we go over his list in a little bit more detail. But let's look at what Rasmus is bringing. An Equitanian Lord on a Hippogriff. Who's the BSB Bastard Sword Ghostly Guard Forbearance. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a Damsel Master on, on Druidism with Lightning Van Braces. We got a Folk Hero General on a Face Deep. Oh, I hate this model. Cleansing Light, Essence of Mithril, Sainted Cleric, Castellan. Mm -hmm. Then, even another a Paladin on a Pegasus Charger, Shield Breaker on a Bastard Sword, Alchemist Alloy, not a leader, not a leader. So it looks like he's got two kind of uh, hitty uh, flying characters. 
the hippogriff and the yep. paladin and the pegasus then we've got 14 feudal knights eight ordo sergeants 30 levies with spear and shield uh nine knights of the quest with the knight banneret 15 enlisted outlaws the hooded men one with the long bows and quick to fire another unit of 10 of those five yeomen and the uh the uh, ladies courtier the courtier of the dawn yeah so um this you know this follows some of the norms of of your kind of typical um you know four single model koe list that were very prevalent at, and performed well at, at etc um he's taken some slightly different choices the the pegasus charger paladin is is one example um i think mainly because he's he's they probably took him because he's cheaper um mm -hmm. the other thing that you didn't see in too many lists was the kind of low the big low born unit and the um and the two yeah. unit of list and outlaws but um i think those those give him some options in maybe more of like a standoffish match um where you know he can use that that low born unit which is cheap to score an objective when and he has some more range damage essentially but in in most ways this is this is kind of your typical koe you know four hitty single models and a couple big lances I was yeah. not thrilled to see the quests uh i generally i, I don't i no don't mind is. the no single models because quests is are are really tough to deal with for my list. Well, yeah, but both the knight sticks are going to be hard for you, right? Yeah, I mean, the the biggest issue with the quest is that they can mark, which I still find completely ridiculous. They can mark high prince entry, which means that both of my princes uh, they get their you know their mechanic against. Um, don't get me started. Um, and so, um, so anyways, at that that's the main the main issue is that like my princes can can deal with that big brick of feudals or, or whatever, but they can't they can't grind the quests out, especially now with Druidism Master. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, especially with the you make you hit it right on the head, I have nothing else to add. Okay, moving on here. Why are you not letting me go? There we go. So this is the pairing. I'm just gonna quickly show the cards because awesome, the cards are awesome. We all love them. But uh you also supplied me with this little graph here. Yeah. So I'm seeing almost all greens and then three yellows, zero oranges or reds. This is, you got to be feeling good going into this. Yeah, we, we did, we did feel good going into this, um, you know, and, and that's always, you know, it's, uh, always to me a little bit of a warning sign i think somebody famously said that you know both teams often go in the round confident yeah, <laughs> with yeah, the bearing yeah so um you know we're, we were expecting that we had kind of miscalled some of these things um i think that um you know for me with the koe you know it is a yellow but it what was one of my lower ranked yellows as you can see um so you know bit fifth out of out of eight um I think overall there were several that we were relatively uh, confident with. Um, let me remind myself here. Um, I thought I think it's funny to have you know UD yellow as a one. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Yeah. Um, but um, but anyways, um, so you know I think we went into this pretty confident. Denmark is a very good team, um, and I believe um, I. I Rasmus, the guy that I got paired into, had a reputation of be as being one of their stronger players. So, was you know knew knew that I could expect a good game. I definitely follow all of the Ninth Age uh, podcasts from Europe, and Rasmus' mm -hmm. name comes up very often in their all of their discussions. So okay. yes, I'm assuming he's a good player. Uh, let's <laughs> see here. Um, so this is marked top of one move. So it looks like we missed. Um, deployment yeah yeah correct um and so he you he's like i think basically making his very first move um over here uh deployment actually actually ended up taking quite a long time um and you know in circle so he won the roll for sides i dropped everything to go first um a couple of things that were you know a bit a bit interesting here one thing that he did that I totally did not expect was he actually took um, big flanks and okay. small. Uh, and I was pretty surprised by, th by that because I would have thought being able to put 
big long charging lances and single models up on that hill would be an incredible kind of zoning force for him. Um, but he he didn't do it, and I, I was you know a little bit surprised. I think that one of the reasons that he may have done that was to prevent me from more effectively using the um, the impassable terrain with my sit with my single models. Okay. Um, so you know, definitely, if Rasmus watches this, would love would love thoughts. But um, I think, in retrospect, I was surprised. But the, you know, by you know, by the end, didn't what didn't come away feeling like he necessarily made a bad decision, just a different one. Um, so you can see on on my side, I dropped for first. Um, essentially, because of the positioning of that house over on the left, I I kind of I, I put some some models over there to make it hard for him to get that spoil. But I don't try to contest it. Essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and because of the positioning of the house on the right, I, I feel like I can make a better play at going after that, that the, spoil over there. This one um, right here, yeah. Correct, yeah. Um, and so I, so left to right, I have my, and positioning didn't great, you can kind of get a picture of where things were. My, so I've got my reaver chariots uh, in the field for cover. Uh, the um, the the flame phoenix over there on the left, basically, you know, working to to continue, you know, make it hard for him to pick up that spoil over there and, and threaten some advances. Um, I've got one of my sea guard units up. Uh, basically, I, I want I want to make it. I, w I want want to force him forward into that center. I know that he's ultimately going to have to do it, but um, you know, having that unit up there with a champion in it can create some good kind of counter zoning. He can't just drop his, you know, his big uh, flyers right in the middle. Mm -hmm. I've made it so that my um, my Nova Griff can counter charge if he does make that the mistake, which he won't. Uh, spoiler alert. And then <laughs> um, I've got my mage. Um, yeah, there's a Nova Griff. I've got my mage up there uh, in the Sea Guard for some ranges on things, um, and then the Grey Watchers behind. Um, the Huntsman Cherry Prince over on the right-hand side kind of circled around with the Lancers in front, the Reavers behind, and the Flame Phoenix over on the right. Um, and then along the back line, you can see I've got one bolt door pretty much central, and then two over on the right-hand side. Um, Probably one's, and, in the corner. Um, one's in the corner there, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. One's over in the corner. Um, and so, um, and then I've got my archers there. And so what you can see in my first turn move is I'm trying to execute the plan. I'm zoning out on the left, um, trying to trying to keep board space in the middle and zone. And then I'm trying to use my lancers over on the right-hand side. You know, essentially what I was trying to do with this first turn movement over there is set it up so that um, I can use the lancers to grab the objective and the reavers to chaff the questing knights and i because i've got six lancers and a champion i can accept the charge from that um that pegasus charger and stay steadfast right challenge him out stay for that fast so up on his side you can see he's making the move with his um courtier of the dawn um and then he has the um he also has the um the, I guess the Order Wardens, one of his scoring units. Is yeah, Order scoring Sergeants. Units. Order Sergeants, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, and then he's got one of the Enlisted Outlaws, the big brick that has his um, caster in it. Mm -hmm. um, he's got the other Enlisted Outlaws be beside them. That Demigriff model is his BSB uh, on the Hippogriff. Mm -hmm. um, he's got the Lowborns in the center there, kind of in the lee of the hill, the Yeomen that um kind of big sort of, sort of green knightish looking thing is his um cleric uh on the face deed uh, and then he's got his pegasus charger and his um quest over on the right one one fun fact rasmus had like basically set his entire deployment up in, in what i thought was a much worse way as questing knights over on the other side um and then he switched to this and this was i think a much better deployment but um so he he initially had an instinct that was wrong I also, I made an error in my first turn. So this was a more minor one, but I forgot that that guy that he put, um, oh, never mind. I, I make that mistake in my second turn. We can go on to the next <laughs> one. Let's see here. Um, come on. There we go. This is marked top of two. Top of two, yes. Um, so um, 
basically you can see you know he's completed the movement that he that we saw in that last picture mm -hmm. um he has he's bringing over his sergeant so that they can grab that spoil on the left he's kind of positioned his um his stuff to shoot at my um at my phoenix um and and then he's he's started his his advance right towards the center spoil he's got he's got to react because i've moved up that sea guard unit um he is still being very careful with both his bsb and his um face steed keeping them out of the line of sight of the bolt throwers mm -hmm. um and um and then he's he pulled back his questing knights and he put and this was this was a a mistake in positioning on on my part he put the he put that paladin on the pegasus charger in a nice little spot there where he was able to see around the house but if you think back to where my huntsman chariot was i couldn't see him yeah and that was a mistake on my part i should have forced that guy to be either completely out of sight or not there at all right mm -hmm. um and so that was a mistake on my part and um and I do end up paying for that. So if we if we zoom back out, um, in my first turn, I don't manage to do much of anything. I think I put one or two wounds on that um, on that guy on the left hand side, and yeah. you can kind of see the little tokens on him. Um, and so then I make I make a move over on the right hand side. Um, I get my you know I put my lancers up on the um, on the objective. I bring my Nova Griff around um to, for for counter charging purposes um and i bring my reavers up oh. and what i what th so this was this was one of two major blunders that i made in this game um i measured the um i measured the um the questing knights uh so to see that they could not fit between the charger and the reavers um and i and i needed the reavers to be out of line of sight of that pegasus charger so that he couldn't just pick them up for free and sit you know and, and run off the board um what i didn't think about was that the pegasus charger could easily just charge the lancers and then the questing knights would have more than enough room to get past <laughs> um and and that was honestly that was just that was just a bad you know a bad you know yeah you didn't think here yeah. mm -hmm. and i think you know if you go back to my we can talk about it at the end but if you go back to my last picture a couple of things worked against me um there was absolutely zero reason i, I should have had the reavers in front of the lancers part of the reason why i wasn't able to execute what i needed to execute was because the reavers had to burn movement to moving around. around the lancers, yeah right yeah, yeah. And so, and there was no, he, he did not have viable charges at that time. There was no reason they shouldn't have been in front. I wasn't going to charge anything with the Lancers anyways. Um, so that was, that was just a, a lack of foresight leading me to a decision that didn't, you know, that didn't work out properly. So mistake on my part here. Um, you can kind of see what I was trying to do. Basically yeah. what I wanted to do was make it so that the questers um, would hit the reavers um not have any overruns and that the pegasus charger could charge the lancers if he wanted to but then he'd be hitting the flank by the nova griffin one shot it essentially and then i'd be able to pick up the objective and run away right yeah. that was that was what i was trying to do um so it didn't work out um the other i made a smaller mistake here and this was just me forgetting i forgot that that um I forgot that that guy over on the left-hand side, the um, the whatever he is, the courtier of the dawn, had fly. So I did all this careful. I was out of his line of sight. I did, you know, and I, and I had arranged it so that I could. I, he would not be able to get out of the line of sight of the reaver chariots because <laughs> I thought he'd have to again move around the house and out. Right. So I measured all of that, but he just flew right over the house and out of my line of sight. <laughs> so, uh, I've Anyways. been there. I have definitely done that. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, you know, I in in Rasmus's defense, um, I think he did mention this, but you know, the model doesn't have wings, so I, you know, I'll I'll that be the thing I'll say to myself that you know to soothe my my bruised ego. Um, and anyway, so that was that was a mistake there. But you can see what I was trying to do over on the left. Mm -hmm. um, I think my early turns magic did not have. 
a ton to do other than just putting up the hereditary and healing the wounds that he was doing to the Phoenix on the left-hand side with his enlisted outlaws, essentially. Um, and so I think I was working a little bit with some sea guard shots and the lowborn levees and maybe the, the yeoman that, that was about it. I put yeah. the other fire Phoenix behind the house and I'm using my huntsman to zone. Um, so now we can go forward to what happens next. So this is marked bottom of two. Yeah. So, um, essentially what, this is where, you know, my, my mistakes get, you know, get exposed. So because of, um, because we, you know, we talked through the issue with the, um, with the Pegasus Charger and the Questing Knights, he charges the Reavers with the Questing Knights. I yeah. flee. Yeah. Um, and then he, um, and then he charges the, um, he charges the Lancers with the Questing Knights and then I flee. Right. Um, and so then he's able to just put his, takes this charger up out of line of sight of my nova griff oh right there but in but right there yeah um now i think if i recall correctly he did have a a nine non-rerollable march block check for my phoenix for that pegasus charger but unfortunately he did pass it um and so he parks him right there and this is a great spot for a few reasons one that guy just has a one-up save right so yeah. um uh so shooting him with single bolts is very viable but he's now got cover for my lancers who have to flee right um and so basically rasmus has one turn where i can shoot at that guy and if i don't kill him i'm in really i'm in really tough shape right yeah. um so other than that he pushes up his up his low borns um he he's keep, again he's still keeping that cleric guy in the back you know pretty safe from the bolt throwers I think he could have pushed better this turn with that guy. Um, you know, maybe been up in the in the lee of the house where I couldn't see him or something like that. Um, because admittedly, I have to shoot at that Pegasus Charger this turn, right? I, I yeah, can't you shoot have at that to. guy. You just have to. So here you can see exactly how close we were with that um, that guy over on the left hand side. He's just barely able to get out of my line of sight with the Reaver Chariots. I would have happily taken 2d6 strength, five impact hits against that guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, mistake on my part. Um, and then, um, yeah, the rest is pretty straightforward. He's putting, basically, we can stop talking about it. He puts all of his shots into my Phoenix, essentially, with, uh, you know, on the left over there and just does, doesn't end up doing much because he's sixes. And I've yeah, got I don't see, I don't see any wounds on there. I think he pushed through one and I healed it. Oh. Uh, you know, it did or like I stopped some with the hereditary. We we can just kind of ignore it. So, um, so then we go into the next picture. Um, Top of three. And yeah, so I I adjust around a little bit, and um, there there's a couple things that I think are are kind of worth explaining. Um, you know what I did. So so first of all, the lancers rally over on the right. Um, and um, I find an interesting place for my flame phoenix up up behind his line. So you can you can kind of see you see where the flame phoenix is up there. Yeah, the base is kind of in front. Yeah, oh, right because here. of the, that guy's wingspan and all his spiky stuff. I basically never had him on his base. He he can go on it, but he's he basically takes up like a foot square of the table. Yeah, with all these spiky <laughs> things that constantly getting stuck on people's shirts and stuff. So he wakes the lowborns and does a decent amount of work there. Um, I I have to pull back with my Nova Griff and my um, and my Huntsman Chariot. Um, I one thing that I considered doing and I ultimately didn't do it. I'm not sure if it was the right decision was I actually could have blocked his Pegasus Chargers charges into my bull throwers with the Nova Griff. Like, so essentially like stick him in front of that guy so that he doesn't have the line of sight. Mm -hmm. But my concern was that basically just delays the problem and that puts the Nova Griff in a position where he's doing essentially nothing, right? Um, and so I opted to kind of move the Nova Griff back. I don't think this placement was good. I think ultimately my play of the Nova Griff over the course of this battle was pretty poor. Um, so we talked about that already. Um, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I did did, he, did he charge your unit in the center of the board here? Yeah, he. I did. I did flee a charge there. Okay. Yeah, correct. Just checking on that. Um, Continue. 
Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, and then the rest is kind of just more zoning and, and trying to stay, um, you know, try to try to you know keep his single models from getting into me. I do like, I think that that Flame Phoenix's position on the hill there is pretty interesting because it does threaten his advance quite a bit. And uh, I think he could have, I think he could have prevented me from doing that, but but wasn't able to. Um, so now, yeah, I think now we can um, we can move along. Uh, oh, so I'll make uh, yeah. So you can see now, I do end up doing two out of the three wounds that bloody Pegasus Charger. Uh -huh. I got. I I did manage. He, I think he I think he saved one with an Aegis, and I did manage to get one through. And so there was this moment where I'm rolling that dice, and I'm like, this is a five or a six. I think I can salvage this game. Yeah. But it was a four, three or something. Uh -huh. So two wounds. So he charges into my bolt thrower um, and um, it positions himself so he can overrun off the board. Either, you know, not much I can do about that. Um, he does charge with his, um, you know, his little guy over on the left-hand side um, and I, and he fails it, fortunately. Um, he makes an, he starts, now that, now that his Pegasus charger is broken in, the, the bolt throwers are starting to go down he he does start moving much more aggressively picks up the token over on the left mm -hmm. um my reaver chariots are back out over on the other side of that house i, I can't see him on the picture but maybe you can um and then um uh, over on the left hand side sorry and then um oh yeah, yeah, yeah and he yeah, starts yeah. moving his quests up to start threatening over on over on the right um because of my misplay earlier i don't really have a viable way to get to that spoil so my hope is mainly just to like keep him off of it and try to contest but um yeah anyways um so some interesting things happen in this turn um with all of my bolt throwers that are unengaged i shoot at that that uh lady thing the the lady courier over on the left and i think i only do like one more wound jeez this is i'm putting like ice and fire and all this stuff into this guy just i'm just not not getting through unfortunately um, but something interesting does happen, which is his Pegasus Charger doesn't manage to kill or break my bolt thrower. Interesting. Um, and I think this is because I had the Hereditary up and he rolled badly, essentially. Okay. Um, so he gets stuck there, which was a, a very interesting opportunity for me that I then unfortunately misplayed. And this is my second mistake of the game. Oh, no. So we Here we go. Here we go. We yeah. My second big mistake. Um, so what do we have as, as far as the next picture looks? Oh, next like? pick. This is bottom four. Yeah. Um, so what I think, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so let me get you oriented on what happens here. Um, over on the right hand side, the Lancers have withdrawn, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I do make, I do go for a couple of charges. One that Rasmus didn't see um, was that Flame Phoenix charging over the hill, like from the hill, over the the um, the feudal knights into the flank of his BSB down um, there. No, sorry, in the middle. Yeah, in this you one. can see the big. Yeah, yeah, um, and that that was a that was an important one because it pins that guy. It also makes the movement of that feudal knight brick very, very challenging because I'm I'm literally right next to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I liked that. I just needed the phoenix to essentially to hold for one combat phase, and then that that move would pay off. Yeah. Um, the the other thing that has that has happened here is I made a another like i said another dumb move with that pegasus charger which was um i'm i'm like okay so he didn't kill it last round i'm gonna go for everything to try to prevent him from killing it this round mm -hmm. so that my nova griff can um because because he i think he might have done no wounds to it okay um, yeah so that my nova griff can counter charge and finally take that guy off right um and then and unfortunately i guess you know i was hoping for lightning to strike twice there the Pegasus Charger did kill the bolt thrower. Eventually, um, yeah, like it should, like it yeah. should. Yeah, um, and then he charges into the rear of that Sea Guard unit that my yeah. mage is in. Now my mage is kind of falling out of the unit, but he he is still in there. So his Pegasus Charger hits me in the rear there. His um, 
his guy, you can see I've done two wounds to his guy over there on the left, right, on, with all of that shooting over time. Uh, and he makes it into the bull thrower, unsurprisingly. And he's now positioned himself to overrun. It's not a close overrun, but to get an overrun into the um, into the sea guard as well. So um, things are starting to get a little bit unfortunate here. I did move one of my sea guard units up into the center, basically as chaff for the feudal knight, so that he's not also charging that unit into my into my lines. Yeah. Um, and um, and he goes ahead and charges with both the lowborns and the and the feudal. So things. Things are coming a little bit off the rails here, unfortunately. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little um, bit. Yeah. But then Rasmus makes a his big mistake of the game. We talked about this at the end. His feudals finish off the sea guard, unsurprisingly. Uh -huh. um, they, they overrun because yeah. he has a 10 into my Huntsman Prince. Yeah, I just based on the positioning, I couldn't do any better than that. But he doesn't make that ten, and he lands himself right in the middle of that water feature. Yeah, with his standard-sized unit, which then loses all of its ranks, and he yep. has he, he has no counterplay. The huntsman goes in, right? Yep. Makes sense. So this is this is a this is a game breaking mistake right here right because there's essentially he, he does there's not much he can do about this my phoenix does manage although he takes a couple of wounds my phoenix does manage to hang on against that lord and he's still there so now we can move on to the next picture this is bottom of five yeah okay so now you now we see the aftermath so my huntsman prince goes in right he challenges out unsurprisingly, right? Because at, at that point, you know, I can max win by five, essentially, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. My Huntsman Prince hitting on twos or threes, wounding on twos, and he has a, you know, a, a five up, six up save, manages to do a single wound to the champion. Uh, One. Uh... Um. This was obviously a huge moment in the game. Yeah. I still win that combat by one, right? Charge and a wound versus a banner, right? I win that combat by one. He has a extremely shaky, you know, eight re-rollable break yeah. test yeah. that he passed. Of course um, he does. Of course. But, he does. Um, of course. but you know, I, I, admittedly, getting max overkill. I mean, it's still it's still a two up armor model, but. I think I certainly should have done, you know, two, three wounds, probably making that more of like a, you know, more of like a six re-rollable. There's, there's every possibility that that completely changes the game because that unit has the spoil, right? Yeah. It has his Druid Master and is also a massive quantity of points, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, if, like, if you would have broken, but it would have, it, it would have swung the game for sure. Changes the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, long story short, it doesn't happen for me. He reforms to get the bulk of his um, unit out of the water. Totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, he does get that overrun with his, um, I don't know why I can't remember, the Courtier of the Dawn into my Sea Guard. I do end up losing my Wizard Master this turn. Nothing much I can do about it. Yeah. Um, but the Sea Guard are holding on, um, you know, the Sea Guard are holding on, on steadfast. Again, so I move I move my Nova Griff over basically to you know to be ready if I can hold on steadfast again, you know, and also potentially counter charge into the you know with the Huntsman combat, all that kind of stuff. So I think finally I, I get a good position with my Nova Griff. I think I've misplayed it essentially the entire <laughs> game up until And you're um, still and one, you're still swinging away on the BSB, but nothing's Yeah. 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 That that guy, you know, that BSB is more of like a tank and less of a hammer um and he's just I, i'm I essentially he stopped perception of strength the prior round on my bsb unsurprisingly right which allowed me to get um hereditary and heal on that phoenix so i've been able to keep that phoenix going um in the intervening time so um so now we go on to the the following picture. I think this might be the net, the last picture. I think it, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
unfortunately he does um he does manage to break my um my sea guard unit um oh. and yeah yeah um so he, he does break my sea guard unit um my huntsman unsurprisingly just kind of sticks and grinds over there um against his uh against his realms but then rasmus makes um makes one more mistake which is that in his turn that following turn he when he broke my sea guard he charges his um he actually charges his his you know invulnerable um courier of the dawn into the flank of my huntsman prince um and oh. i i mean i multi-wound to that guy i, I one shot him yeah. uh, it doesn't doesn't other than getting the points for that unit um, it doesn't necessarily, you know, bring bring a lot to the or for that guy. It doesn't necessarily bring a lot to the table. But he could have just as easily run that guy away and saved the point. So um, that helped a little bit. The other thing that helped was I got a kind of a mid range charge. I think like an eight or a nine with the Nova Griff into the flank of his BSB. So up the, there. The, so this is my question here. You you chose to go to the BSB with the Nova uh, Griff. Would you could <clears throat> you have gone into this night bus? So I could, but that, I think that might have been why Rasmus did what he did, because um, if I go into the night bus, he can challenge out the Nova Griff, right? Um, but with when he because he can bring the um, the courtier in, that guy I think can challenge oh, instead. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I think I think that I, I I don't you know I didn't end up talking to him about the the rationale there, but. Um, Either way, that unit that unit is going to be steadfast, right? He's got a druid as a master. Yeah, I can just, go in. I was just I thinking there's more. Him. There's more points there. Yeah. That's a bigger point situation to grind through, I guess. There, there is there. There's more points, but if you if you think about the way that that combat's going to go, um, he's going to challenge the huntsman with his champ. The Nova, you know, the Nova Griff will do, you know, could do. I don't know six, seven wounds maybe, right? And then the following turn, he brings back the champ inevitably, right? Brings back the champ because he's got two heals, yeah. right? Brings back the champ and um, and another guy, right? So there's no way I break the steadfast. He challenges again. I mean, I, I think that uh, that unit is like 15 or 16 knights, right? So yeah. I think that like it would take an extreme over performance by the Nova Griff to get break through the fast to break the set fast 12 nights with a heel in the intervening time right eh. um it's like almost perfect conversion i think it'd be tough um yeah. but it's a, it's a good point i that may have been why he charged that courtier in to try to try to make it more like more difficult for me to do that i don't know um, all right so you, but you do go into the bsb I do go to the BSB and I one shot him. So, um, so that, that was nice. Um, I mean, he has the one up re-rollable, right? So, or two up re-rollable rather. So lethal strike AP four is pretty good against that. Um, yeah. and, yeah. um, and so I get him, the Phoenix survives. Um, and, um, and we don't think, I don't think we talk much about it, but I use the Reaver Chariots ultimately to scare him off that other objective. He gets his he gets his questing knights onto that objective over there. I'm not able to do anything about it. Um, and uh, that is basically where the game ends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you've lost, you tell all your characters. No, you lost your, your master. Mm -hmm. He's lost his BSB. Uh, and then you've and lost his... his uh courtier and a courtier yeah mm -hmm. so i feel like on points that's not too bad well i lost i lost the bolt throwers um or at least i lost two of the bolt throwers um i lost my reavers um one sea guard unit two sea guard units yeah so he's he's up he's up on points but not massively because, and of course uh, yeah yeah and of course and he and he wins the objective, of course, handily. I think he got all three tokens. You got zero. Two. He got two. Yeah. Uh, and that leaves you with five points. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I uh, good game. Rasmus was a very you know very good good guy to play against. Very you know very straightforward. No no gamesmanship or anything like that. Nice guy. Uh, we chatted a bit after the game. Um, he ended up coming in. Top 
maybe top 10, but certainly top 20 overall uh, for as, you know, as an individual. Um, so he, he obviously had a good tournament. Um, I think I can't blame anything other than misplays on my part. I, I totally misplayed that um, that you know play over on the right to try to grab the right hand objective. Mm -hmm. um, I, I my, my positioning in the Nova Griff was absolutely woeful when when that guy should have been winning the game for me. Um, I was able to claw some things back, you know, in the in the you know the the late game. Um, ha obviously, had that one big mistake from Rasmus that could have you know could have turned the tide in a big way. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah. But didn't go my direction, unfortunately. So, um, well played by him, and you know, good good lessons learned for me on 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 this play. I did have one strategic. I talked to Hugo after this match, and he said that um, he thought it would have been better for me to because of the positioning of that house on the right is so productive for single models for for Erasmus to have instead deployed over on the left. Now that house is a total pain in the butt, but it, yeah, um, you know, I, I see the. Could, but you got you got plenty of flyers to get over that house. Correct, right? So essentially, that behind that house it sort of becomes like a no, like a dead zone. But I, I kind of essentially deploy most of my army behind the hill. I can use that fence, which is nice, uh, and then I can kind of push hard. He, he basically, I think his argument was that I have a better shot of securing that left objective than I do the right. Um, and then it becomes a fight for the middle. So um, I, I think that's I think that's actually pretty reasonable, um, re re especially seeing how it played out. I think it, that could have been a better better approach. Yeah, I can see that too. That makes perfect sense. Uh, I don't know if it would have changed the game because I think this is maybe a little bit of hard hard matchup for you. Uh, pretty much, it's a hard matchup for you, and um, I don't know if that would change the game, but I think it would. I think Hugo was right. It's a, it's a little bit easier for you to go with this for this objective than the one on the right. Um, so tell me how the team did. So, um, that, that is a, a little bit of a sad story. Can, can you bring up the new recruits? Um, oh yeah. The new I, recruit? always, oh. I always forget. Oh. So here we go. Okay. As you can see right here, you got capped. Yeah. So, um, not great. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely underperformed my rating, but, but not by an enormous amount. Um, you know, a couple, um, couple big losses um i think uh you know we we went down hard in a couple of matchups um you know that it's having you know three games that are like 19 17 20 you know hard to recover from unless you get a bunch of you know big wins um which we didn't end up, didn't end up getting so um yeah it was this one was an unfortunate one uh, clearly some misratings i think you know, um, the Sylvan Elf's VS one, I think we had rated as a green, right? So taking a one there, um, not, 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 not a, not a good outcome. Um, the zero for you know, Ben think, hurts. Yeah, but I don't, I can't, I don't think he necessarily had that as a green. I think he had that as a yellow. So, but swingy, oh. um, this, I think Wilhelm ended up getting, being a, a top 20, um, individual result as well. Um, and uh i think i want to say he's the one with the big chariot unit and the triple sphinx maybe um Ugh, that's a rough could list be, that's I could a, be yeah that's a rough um, list. yeah that's a rough list to deal with so um so anyways um long story short it, you know did not did not go very well um for for us i don't i don't know that we were like I don't. I don't know that we were a, a huge amount below sixty points, but we definitely were were capped. So, I think the Danish came at fourth last year. They're sort of perennially a, co a competitor for top oh, yeah. five. So, a good you know, team. not not a bad team to lose to. But yeah, good guys and yeah, rough outcome. All right. So uh, next battle report will be the final round, round six, because if you remember, etc is not the standard five games; it's six games. Um, yeah, we're excited to see how it ends up. I don't think USA is not winning ETC this year, but we'll we'll go through round six game. Um, thank you for joining us. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks, everybody.